Well, hello everyone and welcome to a very exciting episode here on MI Gardener. Today we are doing the thing that everybody loves to do that gardens, and that is start some seeds. Yes, I am so pumped because spring is not here yet, but I'm gonna be starting some of the vegetables that need that amount of time till spring. So uh, we're gonna be starting some of the earliest of the uh, the vegetables, and that is onions, yes. Uh, a lot of you think that it might have been tomatoes or peppers, and those are gonna be in about mm, anywhere between three and five weeks uh, away. So it's, it's definitely coming up quick, but it's not here yet. The reason why I'm planting onions is because I'm gonna be planting not only my Ailsa Craig onion seeds, but I'm also gonna be planting my giant Kelsey onion seeds that I got uh, that came from a 5.2 pound onion. I also bought from West Coast Seed. I also have some Kelsey onions, but these are not verified to come from a giant onion. They're just Kelsey onions, which can get giant. And then I also have another pack of uh, some Elsa Craig's. So I have four packets of onions here. And the four packets of onions are going to be planted uh, today in pots like this. I have a four inch square pot and I think it's a four inch, three or four inch square pot. And the reason why I have a three to four inch square pot is because I'm gonna plant, you know, uh, a pretty good sprinkling on the top and then, or in each pot. And then when they sprout, I'm going to actually um, cut the, the, the planter open, peel out the plants and pick out the strongest of those plants. So I will be using all four packets, but I guarantee you I won't have all those seeds left over because I probably have a good, uh, I mean, there's probably a good, I'd say at least, oh, approximately 620 seeds. They actually tell you. So there's at least 620 seeds in here. There is approximately 250 seeds in each of these packets. So that's 500. So I have yeah, I have well over 1,200 seeds. Um, so 1,200 seeds, I'm not gonna have that many onions because by the time I'm done, some won't sprout. Some are going to, uh, you know, not, um, some are just not gonna germinate as well as others. Um, and so that leaves you the strongest. That's what we're gonna do. So um, let's get started here. This is the mix that I made in the last video. This is the, the premium super starter seedling mix that I'm going to be using uh, for all my seedlings actually. And it is just a one-to-one -one ratio of worm compost or vermicompost and the Jiffy organic seed starting mix. And then it has a little bit of crushed, uh, it's crushed Leonardite. Basically it has humic acid in it. And then I have um, Gaia Green Glacier rock dust in here as well. That's all mixed up for a really good nutrient dense mix. Now, uh, one quick tip. Uh, a lot of people always ask me, um, you know, what I use to, to plant in. And I use, I use the same planters over and over and over again. Uh, but one thing that I do is a really quick tip for you all is if you like being thrifty, I always like doing the recycle and reuse, reuse, recycle. Um, I'd rather reuse than recycle because it costs, there's a lot more energy involved in recycling something than simply reusing it. So reuse first, recycle second, and throw away if, uh, if need be. Um, so I like reusing, and I will get these when I buy plants from the nursery, or sometimes I can even get them. People throw them out of the side of the road, I'll pick them up. Um, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure. And I don't like reusing things that are still dirty. And so a lot of people are probably wondering why I do that, but I use them dirty. The reason why I don't use them dirty is because onions and tomatoes specifically can contract uh, fungal diseases and viruses extremely easy. And you don't know what's been grown in them before if you uh, pick them off the side of the road. You don't know where they've been, and you also don't know what grew in them previously. So if there was something that was growing in here that had you know, bad soil or maybe it was a bad plant, that can still be on 
these planters here and I love reusing them even myself if I grew them these last year which I did I'll still wash them out because I don't know what's been touching them what's been you know around them and I don't want to bring that into an enclosed environment like this because when I have plants that are all close together you get one plant that gets sick and they will all get sick faster than you can believe and trust me it happened it happened uh, two years ago to one of my tomato plants I uh, got blight and I had to panic luckily I saved it but it was uh, not fun so this is a way you can alleviate that problem uh, kind of make sure it doesn't happen um, as little as possible so getting to what I was getting at is what if you want to reuse these simply all you have to do is take a bucket with a tiny bit of bleach I use one gallon of water to a tablespoon of bleach I put a tablespoon of bleach in mix it around and I dunk the cup in there I dunk the planter in there swish it all around scrape the edges with a brush uh, make sure you get all that soil out and then I just let it sit out and dry after I wash it off again because um, the bleach is going to dry out anything if there's any little bugs on here it's going to dry their skin out kill them um, it kills off any funguses bacterias um, molds mildews anything like that um, it's gonna it's gonna wipe them out so that is how I reuse my planters year after year safely let's get started here uh, I'm first going to set them out in this tray I have a holeless seed tray this holeless basically means there's no holes in it um, I'm just gonna set these uh, in here they don't totally fit because it's not the right tray but I just wanted something that could hold water because the way I'm gonna water these is I'm actually going to water them from the bottom uh, bottom watering is really good especially when indoors because um, if you overwater, there's not like wind that can dry out the soil on top and uh, there's not the sun beating down that can dry things out really rapidly so water tends to stick around a lot more indoors so you have to be careful on how much you water especially around the base of the plant where it can rot rot the base of the plant out um, so I'm just gonna fill these up and then I will get back with you all when it is done so I think we're gonna plant the uh, Kelsey onions from West Coast seeds first and we're just going to sprinkle these right on top here we're not gonna worry about digging a hole or anything um, I'm just gonna sprinkle these in our hand here about uh, there's a lot of seeds in there there's probably about a good 100 150 maybe even close to probably maybe 200 there's quite a bit of seeds in my hand and we're just gonna sprinkle these right on top there um, and then the next one we're gonna plant these and we're just gonna pop that right there now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this vermiculite here this is a fine grade vermiculite I got uh, about oh I'd say uh, eight eight cubic or er, eight uh, eight quarts of it I'm just gonna sprinkle this right on top um, of the of the seeds and to do this is not you know mandatory it's not uh, you know it doesn't have to be done um, but for me it's crucial because I have a fungus gnat problem and if you do not get rid of the fungus gnats they're gonna be around and then they're going to be in your soil and they end up eating on the roots and they ruin germination rates so I put about uh, you know maybe about a half an inch of of the uh, of the fine vermiculite on top and it's gonna act just like a soil would but it's it's coarse and it's also um, it's it's not organic material so therefore the the fungus gnats can't burrow into it and lay eggs into your into your soil because they can't get through that's why you want a, a pretty thick layer there so I'm just gonna spread this out and that's what you want to do if you have you know organic matter or even if you're planting in cocoa core and you just don't want to want to risk it uh, typically you don't have a problem if you're not dealing with organic matter like uh, compost or stuff like that um, because stuff that's been sterilized like a cocoa core is is not gonna have anything for the 
the uh, fungus gnats to really enjoy. But since I'm using the worm compost in here, that is uh, that's something that that the fungus gnats would definitely you know enjoy. And the last thing we're gonna do is just get our spray bottle here and just mist the mist the uh, tops here. The soil's already pretty damp because of the worm castings, but I just want to make sure that the uh, the vermiculite sets down. And you can also put this on a heat mat. It's really not that cold in this room, but if you have a colder part of your house where you're germinating your seeds, it'll definitely help the germination rate quite a bit. It'll also help the germination time. So uh, make sure that you use your judgment on that. For me, it's not really that crucial. So that is that. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode and hopefully in about a week or two, we're gonna see some beautiful sprouts coming up and then we can move on to the next part of the series where we separate and transplant the onion seedlings. So until next time, I will talk to you all later. This is MI Garden reminding you to grow big or go home. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this episode or any other episodes, please don't hesitate to pop them in the comments box below or shoot them over in an email and I'll answer them promptly. I will talk to you all later. See ya. Bye.